Jumping right into it, Hiko is in a clutch scenario up against the enemy team, and he gets an insane, an insane 4K, okay? This guy is nuts, but notice what he does afterwards that we really need to talk about. So he knows that the last member of the team is going to be swinging towards him. He fakes a plant and instantly uses his ult to go to the other side of the map. Now, you might be asking, why did he do this? Well, he knew that the Sova was there, and the fact that he gets to plant on the other side of the map means that the Sova needs to quick rotate in order to actually get there in time. There's a huge time crunch that actually is really pressuring the enemy Sova. He not only does this, but he actually moves to the most likely point of transition for the Sova, and he manages to hear him, catches him off guard, and executes the kill to clutch the round with an ace. Hiko has quickly cemented himself as one of the best Valorant players to come out in this early stages of Valorant. So let's break down and analyze some of Hiko's highlight moments so that we get a true understanding about what makes him just so good. If you like Valorant news, Valorant content, or if you just want to improve, smash that sub button. We're going to be pumping out way more VOD reviews in the future. But without further ado, let's just jump right into it, shall we? So kicking off this next highlight play, Hiko annihilates the enemy with this share. He makes quick work of the Reyna on the high ground, and he systematically destroys the enemy here. Now, the big question I gotta ask you is how many times in your games have you ended up in this exact situation? Now, this is a really amazing situation for one, turning around the corner and you see multiple people flashed, but you would be very surprised how many people can connect and kill all three members of the enemy team. Now, if you think Hiku's gonna kill all three of these people, you'd be wrong. Yes, he's done it in the past, but he actually kills no one here. But the important thing to take from this is how he plays this engagement, because I'm sure that this is going to happen to you. How do you play this engagement in a way that you can win the duel, get some kills, or at the very least, stay alive even if things go wrong? Well, notice right afterwards, Hiko tries to land a couple of shots unsuccessfully. Now, even though he doesn't hit his shots successfully, he repositions in a way that allows him to leave the effective LOS of the enemy before the 1.1 seconds has weared off of the Phoenix Flash. Now, why is this important? Well, essentially what he did here is he gave himself a possibility to get picks and kills. He set himself up for an opportunity, but even if those didn't connect, even if he didn't connect with his shots, he doesn't get punished for it. And this is the big takeaway with Hiko's play. Hiko's an amazing mechanical player, but you're not going to be able to hit amazing shots every single time. If you set yourself up in smart engagements and give yourself a clear way to get out, you can potentially stay alive for further engagements down the road. Exactly what Hiko does in this clip. Now with the preceding duel with the Omen, I really want you to take note of the fact that Hiko will not reload in this situation. And this is a huge mistake that a lot of players make. He still has four shots and can easily lethal the Omen. But if you reload, not only can you get pushed on, but enemies can hear that sound. You can see it in the top left you will see the area that enemies can actually hear your sound, so you do not want to reload when enemies are near. He then actually heals himself up to max HP and reloads while he's behind natural cover, gets himself to full, and waits for the enemy Sage to peek him and just shuts her down. Now notice this last engagement with the Phoenix. He could take the 50-50 with this Phoenix. He actually did a little bit of damage onto him, but instead he goes in with his ultimate and starts defusing. Now, he manages to get it to the halfway mark, which is value in itself, but he tries to stick it completely and he puts a lot of pressure on the enemy Phoenix to actually push up past the high ground, puts him into a different position. Now, after the fact, he puts a wall, putting further pressure on the potential defuse, making the Phoenix want to push forward and he kills him. The Phoenix knew that he already got to the halfway mark. He made the Phoenix go more forward as an additional pressure to him. And the fact that he used the wall as a last bit of pressure really put the nail in the coffin for the enemy Phoenix, making him feel like he was so pressured to stop the defuse that he had to push up. All in all, the big takeaway for you here is even after you popped off and killed so many members of the enemy team, do not be ever afraid to invest your abilities, even if you're in an advantage fight, if it means clutching the round. Hiko got a tag on that enemy Phoenix, but he still invested his heal, his wall, and his ultimate just for the fact that even though he got all those kills, it doesn't really translate to any tangible value unless he clutches up the round as well. So putting in the additional resources in order to close out the round was definitely worth it. 
And I think it's really important in your games, especially in high pressure scenarios with one kill after the other, you need to remember that you have abilities and you need to always be thinking about whether or not you should have best in any given situation. Hiko could have easily lost this 1v1 if he chose to instead not invest any of his abilities or if he wasn't even actively thinking about using his abilities in the first place and was so tunnel visioned on just shooting the enemy. Now this next clip really shows how Hiko utilizes pressure and mind games in order to absolutely destroy the enemy. Oftentimes he'll do things like faking plants or faking even abilities in order to trick enemies into playing right into him. So let's break down this clip and show you everything you need to know in order to adopt this insane pro playstyle into your games. So right off the bat, notice that he's playing Viper and he throws down his cloud right onto the point. Now, he activates his cloud and instantly starts the spike animation. Now, he's going to do it one more time. And why is this important? Why does this matter? Well, the thing is, the Sova was actually looking into the smoke because once you hear that initial sound, you don't hear any preceding sound. So the enemy thinks that he is full committing to a plant inside the smoke and Hiko played into that punishing the Sova. He then started to plant on default where people traditionally plant in that L shape in the middle of the map and the omen tried to make a teleporter play which he instantly punished with another fake plant. Now you might start to see a pattern here and it's something that Hiko even did in the last clip that we broke down. Hiko loves to use the spike either defuse or planting in order to create pressure for the enemy. You see, when a spike is planted or when a spike is near explosion, it puts so much pressure on the contrary inside to that to not only punish you for doing it in the first place, but to never let you get it down or defuse it, of course. Now, after watching these clips and breaking it down, there's something that's extremely clear that you need to take away from this video. The more pressure you put an enemy under, the more time crunch you put them under, the more predictable their decisions become. You see, the more pressure you put on someone, they are not only more likely to do the most obvious thing, but a lot of the unpredictable plays that could come out, like going on a far flank or waiting you out or things like that, those slowly become blocked out to where the possible plays from the enemy become smaller and smaller the more pressure you put on the enemy. Imagine in the same way a spike that's going to explode and an enemy that has to defuse. If they have an entire mid, then they can come from many different sides. No matter where they are on the map, they could potentially reroute all the way around the map, come from an angle you don't expect. Now, if the enemy only has 10 seconds and you know where they generally were, you know that they can only come from one place. And Hiko takes that philosophy and applies it over the course of the entire game. He uses the idea of pressure, typically around planting a spike or defusing a spike, and he uses that to help him predict what an enemy is going to do and set up really smart engagement peaks. Just like he baited that Silva in this clip, just how he baited that Omen and had a really clear line of sight from heaven. And just like he baited that Phoenix in order to coming further off the high ground onto the ledge in the first clip we analyzed. It's an insane concept that you need to start using in your games. And I swear you'll have way more impact on average. And it really gives you some insight into why he goes such an insane player in the first place. Speaking of insane, you know what else is insane? Subscribing to GameLeaf.com. Do it. Smash that button right now. Especially if you want to see up-to-date, high-quality guys just like this one. We're going to be pumping out way more. I tried this VOD review analysis style. If you want to see more, definitely smash that like button. And let me know in the comments down below. I can break down other characters or other players, streamers, or whoever, pro players, I could break them all down and give you valuable insights so that you can really learn because that's what we're all doing, right? We're learning from some of these amazing godlike players exactly what we need to do in order to pop off in our games. Anyways, that's all we got for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and until next time.